Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to explore a very common unfortunate issue that regards cassette tapes, audio cassette tapes. Unfortunately, um, in many, several cases, a lot of people think they have just a, a, a bad cassette, a, a problematic cassette that's not just not working. And who knows why, it's just time to throw it out. No, you're probably facing um, an important problem connected to lubrication. Oh yes. You want to know how to solve that? Let's take a look. Okay, so you ever heard about those squeaky cassettes or worse a lot of times uh, for example the cassette goes for a, a minute or two and then all of a sudden stops or the wow and flutter are terrible and you can clearly hear distortion in reproduction and then all of a sudden after that again the cassette stops well most probably you're ha you're facing a problem of lubrication yes tape is uh, lubricated it has a film which uh, enhances helps the transport the reading of it and sometimes um, uh, this can evaporate can dry out hence great issues enormous issues with the tape transport which also can create some stress after years and years of usage on your tape deck um, we have one main fundamental uh, example among among all, but not it doesn't regard only this type of cassette. But the, I think this is a good case, a good example. What am I talking about? You've already seen these in other videos, but these are my main patients. Uh, these are, as you can see, XDR cassettes. What are XDR cassettes? Um, these are special cassettes which have, according to uh, the specification an expanded dynamic range that's what's what the XDR stands for um, it's practically almost a sign off of quality where the duplication of the cassettes is actually um, uh, done in a high quality environment which uh, guarantees a high frequency response a high, a high frequency range uh, that's why also they, they have that special tone burst at the beginning so they can check if the uh, frequency response is correct on these type of tapes. Um, these were issued by classical, uh, by Capital Records and M EMI and they are a uh, great sound. I mean I think they're, these are among, among the best cassettes around when you find the XDR version of a normal uh, issue of a pre-recorded cassettes. Obviously we're talking about pre-recorded cassettes, nothing incredible. But again, I mean, if you if you can, this is uh, the way to go, usually. Unfortunately though, there's a big issue regarding these cassettes, the XDR cassettes. Uh, I just started using them and I found out this, I had some problems. Every time I bought this type of cassette, there was a problem and after just a few seconds or a minute or two, the tape just stopped working. So what was happening? After mm, a lot of hours of research, I finally understood what was the problem. Um, it's a problem, as you already get, have already guessed, of lubrication, of lube. Um, in particular, these, that's why I decided to pick these, because there's a huge um, uh, story behind these, actually. Uh, th there was a person in charge who got fired when Capitol Records discovered that XXDR tapes uh, had a faulty lubrication. Yes, all of the XDR cassettes, or at least the, the, the great majority of the production of XDR cassettes, first with Capitol and then with EMI, suffered from this vanishing of the dry out of the lubrication. Oh yes, in fact... I bought this new, it was never played, which is even worse actually, because otherwise the tape was uh, was going up and down, but this was crystallized, it stopped, it was never played, and it suffered immediately from great problems in the transport. So uh, after looking around, I found a solution. This solution I have to owe it mainly to uh, the guy named Lucky on tape heads. Here's an image, thank you Lucky. Thank you for this great um, information. I'm gonna pass it on through my channel here. 
it's I think it's correct to say it was your idea. I maybe went a little further ahead with it and let's take a look how to solve this because it's not only, as I said, XDR tapes. It also regards every time you have problems with the transport of your cassettes when they just stop or they start squeaking and you have wow and flutter, incredible problems. This may greatly help. Wanna see how? Let's take a look. Back to lubrication. Okay guys, so um, let's start to see what we need to solve this problem. So first of all, as we said, we need our two patients, for example. Well, let's just say one, one little patient here. Um, I'm going to do the treatment on a, a different cassette because this has already been treated. So we're going to find a substitute. Here we go. We have this Maxil, very old, low ultra noise, 60 minutes by Maxil, type one cassette. Um, what we need, this is very important, is a cassette player, a cheap cassette player that gives you access practically to the tape. Otherwise, it's impossible to do that, what we, what we need to do, because we have to physically lubricate the, uh, the tape, the tape on this cassette. So um, if I put it like in here, in a normal boom box, see, you're not gonna be able to access that. Fortunately, this, for example, can just be slipped in like this, see? And I have access here to the tape I wanna treat. So um, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna uh, lubricate a piece of a Q-tip. So we're gonna need also two Q-tips per, per um, side, I would say. So four Q-tips just to make sure you're really gonna oil that, lubricate that tape. Plus, we're gonna need the lubricant. Um, turning back to good old Lucky, he was suggesting something like this, contact 61. This actually is to enhance the contact between electric components. It's good, it's not bad. I mean, it's, it, it, it can work. I think I found something better, and there are lots of them very similar, by 3M, uh, this silicon-based lubricant, which is very good. Um, it doesn't corrode in any way the, uh, the tape and the, the, um, the ferric or chrome or whatever component is on the film. So this, I think it's probably the best solution. But again, Contact 61 is also an excellent solution. I just think this was a little better. Um, so let's see how we're gonna proceed to do this. Uh, the, as you can see, the most expensive part, you can all find these all these things on, on Amazon, is this. The best thing is to check, for example, uh, uh, an old cassette player on, on eBay, or maybe even the new ones, if they give you access to the cassette. But then you're gonna have to go fast forward and rewind. But um, the important part, as I said, is that you have access to the, uh, the cassette here. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to do this, the process. So let's see how. Okay, so once you found cassette player with possibly, it would be better with a single cap stand, Otherwise, you're going to have problems if it has two cap stands. But these cheap cassette players are certainly not going to have two cap stands. Are uh, ready to um, treat our patient. So we're going to get our cassette. We're going to get a Q-tip. It's very simple, actually. We're going to apply some of this silicone-based lubricant on the Q-tip. Not too much, I'm gonna do this on a piece of paper. Okay. At this point, now this Q-tip, it has its lubricant here. We have to insert it in this first hole. Remember to put it on side A with all the um, actually, it, it's better, no, I'm sorry, um, it's the opposite. It's better if you have the tape on the other side of where you're going to treat it. So you're going to have a rewind session first and then a fast forward session. <clears throat> um, 
So we, you guess, just got to push this inside gently, not too rough. And until you have something like this. Okay. As you can see, the tape passes behind the Q-tip. So um, it will be able to get the lube uh, on the correct side. Um, you're going to have to repeat this at least two times. It's better. It's, otherwise, you're going to have some... It's not going to be effective. So we're going to put our cassette inside, just like that. And we're going to push, push rewind and trying to keep this kind of firm. There you go. So as you can see, the machine is operating. And at the same time, it's lubricating the, uh, the tape. So once we've done this on this side, we're going to take our cassette all out and again put some lubricant on the uh, Q-tip. As you can see, there's also some dirt. And again, put it inside on this part and the tape again is going to be rewound. It's better if you're going this way, rewinding the tape instead of fast forwarding it. Fast forwarding it. Um, what is the problem with this solution? Because there is a problem, actually. The problem is that it takes time, a lot of time. Sometimes it may take just 24 hours. Some people um, say to repeat this operation again the day after. Um, but make sure to wait at least 24, even better, 48 hours before playing the cassette. I just want to say one thing. I did this treatment to the to these two XDR cassettes with the I put uh, both lubricants actually because I was not obtaining any results. It did not work. What happened then? I waited. I just waited a lot of days, and after actually weeks, I don't know why, but it took weeks to the lubricant to seep in the film, and finally now these cassettes play perfectly. So this is the downside of this treatment. It takes a lot of time, especially with XDR cassette, with, where they don't have any kind of lubricant remaining in most cases. So just remember this aspect and then you're good to go, guys. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this solution. If you have other solution, if you have other oils that you suggest, any anything else that can help us in repairing our cassettes, um, apart from obviously obvious things like change the shell, uh, fast and forward, and things like that. We all know that. I mean, consistent, important, mm, final solutions that can really help us in bringing back to life our cassettes. Please write our, your comments. Please write your suggestions here below. We're all, all very interested in them. Thank you, guys. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye.